It's a rather warm yet nice June evening tonight where I am. I've had some clear skies for the first time in a long, long time, and I've been looking forward to going back out into the field and doing some more astrophotography. June is that time frame where the spring constellations start to move out and the summer ones start to move in. So we'll be able to see the core of the Milky Way as well as the various amounts of nebulae targets now populating our night sky. However, although galaxy season is coming to a close, there are a few galaxies in primetime viewing in the early parts of June. And tonight, I'm going to be photographing one of them. This is a target that I have done previously, but I've been wanting to make some improvements on it. I've already collected some new data on this last night, and tonight I'm going to hopefully get some new data to try and create the best image possible. So join me for my first astrophotography imaging session on this channel as I revisit one of my favorite galaxies, Messier 51, also known as the Whirlpool Galaxy. My name is Kwesi Aqua, and welcome to the Astro Park. Messier 51, also known as the Whirlpool Galaxy, is an interacting grand design spiral galaxy located in the constellation of Canis Venoctici at a distance of 23 million light years away from Earth. Discovered by Charles Messier on October 13, 1773, it was the first galaxy to be classified as a spiral galaxy. It has an estimated diameter of 76,000 light years and a mass of 160 billion solar masses. The ball of gas at the tip of the Whirlpool Galaxy is actually a companion dwarf galaxy known as NGC 5195, discovered by Pierre Méchon in 1781. Both galaxies are located approximately 25 million light years away from each other. The spiral structure of the Whirlpool Galaxy is theorized to be the result of the close interaction between it and NGC 5195, which may have passed through the main disk of M51 about 500 to 600 million years ago. So here's a quick rundown of the equipment I'll be using for tonight's photo session. For imaging, I'll be using the Orion Eon 130ED triplet apochromatic refractor, and I'll also be using my new camera, the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. It's a one-shot color CMOS camera. And all of this will be sitting on top of my newest mount, the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG mount. And since light pollution is a big factor for me, I'll be using the Optolong L Pro broadband light pollution filter to try and keep that down to a minimum. So, all that's left is to put everything together. So, let's go outside and take a walk in the park. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and we are here. Welcome to the actual Astro Park. So all the photos that I've taken over the last year and a half, almost two years, was done right here at this very spot. This is actually a dog park in my neighborhood, so a lot of pet owners tend to come out here, play with their dogs and things of that nature. So over in the distance is the recreational center. There's a swimming pool over there. And on the opposite side, there's a um, jungle gym where the kids play. 
So as you can see, there's like a lot of lamps that I have to deal with in terms of light pollution. So that Optolong L Pro is definitely gonna be helpful here. Uh, where I live in Maryland, uh, on the Bortle scale, we're at level seven, so I'm in the red zone. So, not the most ideal of locations, but it gets the job done. And then, over here is the entrance to my neighborhood. So, behind this pine tree is the main street where all the cars come in, so there's a lot of cars that come in during the evening time during my sessions. So, I actually set up in front of this tree here to block out most of those car headlamps, as you can see right here. But, anyways, so, I've got all my gear right here. So, let's get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Whirlpool Galaxy. So I just completed my polar alignment where the mount is now pointed towards the North Celestial Pole. So next up, I'm going to do a quick star alignment and then we can start our imaging session. So let's hop over to the computer and start up APT. Okay, so this is the interface for Astro Photography Tool or APT for short. So this is my acquisition software. There's various other programs that people can use, such as Sequence Generator Pro, Nebulosity, and uh, Nina is like the newest one. But I've used APT for the longest time now because it's pretty beginner friendly and easy to use in my opinion. So first thing I'm doing is I'm cooling the camera to minus 10 degrees Celsius. So a cool sensor will help minimize the noise. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is begin our star alignment procedure. So here you have the option to choose either a one, two, or three star alignment. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the two star alignment. And then I can just choose a star in the database. So my first star, let's see. Let's do Regulus. This is in the constellation of Leo. So I press the enter button. And now the telescope will slew to where it thinks Regulus is. And then I can use my finder scope to make the finer adjustments. So, let me take a quick look and I'll be right back. Okay, so there's the star Regulus in the constellation of Leo. So, I'm going to put that in the center crosshair and then I'm going to do a quick focus adjustment on that just to make sure everything's all focused up. And then I'll slow over to my second star to make sure that's aligned. And then we can move on with the imaging plan. All right, so the alignment procedure has been completed. So all we gotta do is slew to our target. 
So let's find the object list. This is in the Messier catalog. Whirlpool Galaxy is Messier 51. View object and it's gonna slew. All right, so it's pointed towards M51. So let's take a look. Turn my light off real quick. And there it is. Messier 51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. So it's a faint fuzzy. So to the right, you can see the core of M51 right there. And then to the bottom, that slight fuzzy, that's the companion galaxy, NGC 5195. And you're seeing a live four second loop. So that's pretty cool. All right, so now I'm going to frame up my object, so I'll take just a moment. Okay, so the Whirlpool Galaxy is framed up the way I want it to be. So next thing we need to do is start our guiding program. So this is a PhD2 guiding. So I just need to go through a few calibrations. First off, I need to actually connect my equipment. So let's go ahead and take care of that real quick. So that's my guide camera is the ASI 290mm Mini. So click OK. And on camera, close out of that. So first thing we do is run a loop just to see what the guide camera is picking up. And we have several guide stars to choose from. So I can go ahead and click stop, stop the loop. Then go ahead and select one of these stars. I'll choose this one right here, it looks pretty nice. And then I'm gonna go back to APT and actually connect APT to PHD2 so that they both communicate with each other. So I click guide, okay. So you can see in the top left here, PHD state is connected, which is what we want. I can go over PHD2 and click the screen button to begin the calibration. So it's gonna move the star in each direction, north, south, east, west, just to see the distance that it goes, and then we'll start guiding. So while it's working on that calibration, you can go back to APT and then start the actual imaging plan. So let me select a the plan that I did from last night. So light flames plan for M51. Let's make sure everything's correct here. So I'm going to take a 23 minute exposures. So that's 180 seconds. So that's an hour of exposure time because during every hour I'm going to double check the focus just to make sure that it's okay. So yeah, it looks good. So exposure is 180 seconds, bin one by one, take 20. Click OK. Yep, so now it's basically ready to go. So once PHD2 starts guiding, we can then start the imaging plan. All right, so PHD2 has completed its calibration. So you can see the green lines, it's locked onto that star and we're now guiding. So. The red and blue graph lines indicate the direction that it's moving in right ascension and declination. So blue is RA and red is DEC. So it makes slight calibrations just to make sure that the object is centered perfectly. So now we can go back to APT. I will turn off the live view. So once again, 23 minute exposures. PhD2, 
PhD2 state is at 0 0.21, which is pretty good. Now it's at 0.19. So ideally you want to get this below one arc second per pixel. Last night I got it down to about 0 0.07, which was fantastic. The, my new Atlas Pro mount is a beast. It's like the guiding is so smooth. I, I love it. So let's go ahead and press start and we are off to the races. Exposure started. So I'll be collecting my first hour of data just to see how everything goes. And we'll just check back in. All right, we are about five seconds away from the first exposure. It's always exciting to see exposure the first one finished. come and see how it looks like. So let's see what we got. Dithering started. Wow, look at that. There's the Whirlpool Galaxy. So you can see the core and some of the spiral structure here. And then NGC 5195 right next door. Dithering finished. Exposure started. No matter how many times you photograph a specific object, it just never gets old just seeing it on the screen. It's just a really exciting time. So, yep, so one down, 19 more to go. So, I'll be taking some more sub exposures for the next hour and we'll just see how it goes. Hey guys, so I just thought I'd give you a quick update. It's about 12.30 in the morning right now, and I'm starting my second session of 23 minute exposures. I just did another refocus on a bright star, and I'm starting my new session again. So I just wanna take a quick moment to talk about the importance of focus, because as the night progresses, the temperature drops, and that can change your focus a little bit. So the way I do it, I just use an old school method. I use this device, it's called a Batonoff mask, and it creates a diffraction spike pattern on the screen. And you wanna make sure that that middle spike is lined up with the X, and that will tell you that you're on focus. So it's good practice to do your focusing routine every hour if you can. That's something I learned the hard way. I just thought when I first started, I set the focus and I'm good to go for the rest of the night. And then I find out the next day when I'm processing my images, half of my data is blurry and unusable. So it's always good to try your best to focus during every hour if you can. Hey guys, so I just wrapped up my session on the Whirlpool Galaxy. I just got my last batch of 23 minute exposures. And overall, it was, a, it was a pretty good session. I was able to get a little over three hours of data tonight on the Whirlpool Galaxy, which is really good. And combined with what I did last night, that should be a good image to show at the end of this video. Unfortunately, I did see a few frames where I saw some bright streaks going through. It was most likely either a meteor or an airplane going through. I should be able to remove that with Kappa Sigma clipping in post-production, but if the streak is too big, I'll, just, I'll have to throw that out altogether. But um, I was able to take additional exposures to compensate for that. 
so yeah, overall it was a very good session and I feel pretty good about this. So all that's left is to shoot my flat frames and that's a wrap. So I'll pack everything up, go home and get some well-deserved sleep. Well, finally back home now. It is 4.20 a.m. I am burnt out. So I am going to go to sleep now. But I had a lot of fun this evening shooting the Whirlpool Galaxy. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the experience just as much as I enjoyed making this video. So as I mentioned before, I was able to collect a little bit over three hours tonight. And combining that with the three hours that I got yesterday evening, I should have about six plus hours of data on this galaxy, which is really cool. So I can't wait to go into Pixinsight and start processing. So, yep, thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy the image of the Whirlpool Galaxy at the end of this video. And until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies. Good night. Thank you.